Thank you for great presentations. It's um, exciting to listen. Uh, my question is that in addition to this central sensitization and everything you have talked so clearly and nice about, how do you view the peripheral input on this? We know that inflammation uh, gives uh, a low pH in the muscles. We know that myofascial pain does the same. We know that the ASIC-3 receptors, they are connected to neurons that produce substance P and actually may sensitize the nervous system. And um, in my head, and I guess you will come to that later, it's, it's important also in quite a number of the patients to address the peripheral uh, pain also. Thank you. Dan, would uh, you like to? I completely uh, agree. Therefore, we recommend a complete medical examination. <laughs> and, uh, and fibromyalgia is a very heterogeneous condition. And therefore, we made this suggestion of subgroups. And if you have some other peripheral pain generator, of course, you need to treat it. It doesn't yeah, matter. If there's a microphone yeah. anywhere in the room, it'll pick up my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I likewise agree, and I'll talk about that in my talk about etiology, but uh, the way I teach people is you have to add together what's going on in the periphery, and then the central nervous system can either turn up what's going on in the periphery, it can amplify what's going on in the periphery, or it can turn down. The, the, we know that there's a lot of people that have, like, that, like I said, that knee radiograph where there's no cartilage left, but 40% of those individuals aren't experiencing any pain. So, the, 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 so I really think of you, the, the fact that you have to add those two things together, and that's why I like the electric guitar analogy. An electric guitar, if the amplifier is set up really high, even if you don't strum the strings, there's static and noise that comes out of the um, amplifier. Um, and conversely, if you turn the amplifier entirely off, you can still hear the guitar. It's not as loud. But it, um, and so I really, I think we really have to teach people to, to look for both sets of factors and look at how they're um, interacting. And I will talk about, I think one of the big unanswered questions in the fibromyalgia field that's, that's really unanswered, and our group is really looking at this uh, very actively, is I, I actually believe there is a form of fibromyalgia that is more um, top down, that starts in the brain um, and these are the individuals that by age 30 will have, you know, dysmenorrhea and headache and irritable bowel and fibromyalgia. They'll have all these conditions. And I actually believe that that actually is a fundamental brain disorder. But th there's another group of people that develop fibromyalgia along with um, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, sickle cell disease, um, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. These all have very high rates of fibromyalgia, and, I, and we think that is more central sensitization, like you're referring to, that is more bottom up, that it's that ongoing peripheral nociceptive input is driving the central nervous system process. And if that's true, that form of fibromyalgia, you have to be really aggressive about turning off the peripheral input because it is then being amplified and augmented by the brain. So I think it's gonna take a while for us to tell the difference between these two, because phenotypically the people look the same. Um, but I, but uh, we have a lot of data in our group that you can pretty clearly see these two different subsets um, of central sensitization, if you will, one that is being driven by nociceptive input and the other that isn't. Hmm? <coughs> Good question. Uh, we'll try not to uh, um, Disturb uh, the break too much, but three or four minutes more, and then break. Okay. My name is Kiri, and I have uh, fibromyalgia. And uh, I was thinking more about uh, the reasons why. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that uh, it has to do with, uh, uh, for instance, from your mother's womb, how much uh, serotonin you can uh, can make and all that stuff, has it ever been a, uh, have you ever looked into um, the chemistry 
that kind of makes us more vulnerable. Like for instance, if you, your mother are, are low on it before you, you, you produce it yourself, so that you are uh, easier for you to get it if you get into crisis in life, for instance, a disease, or you have psychological crisis, I mean, uh, I, I think that's very interesting because that can actually be measured. So, I mean, that could show us uh, if, if that could be a reason. I, I, will I don't also even know if it's a question. But no, 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 it's a qu comment. You can comment. Yeah, yeah I, I'll talk about that later. And I'll show slides of all the different neurotransmitters that are either too high or too low okay. in people with fibromyalgia, serotonin being one of them. Okay, one short question and then uh, the break with coffee. Um, thank you so much for very interesting talks. Um, as, a, as a clinician, uh, central sensitization is something we see uh, almost at a daily basis. But <laughs> sorry, uh, as a clinician, um, central sensitization is something we see very often. Um, however, it's very difficult to uh, see the difference between um, fibromyalgia and central sensitization. Um, and I'm thinking, shall we now start to call central sensitization for fibromyalgia? And um, where is kind of the, um, the crossover and the differences? Um, and in your opinion, how does fibromyalgia usually start in patients? Do they have um, a specific episode in the life or is there something in your opinion in your experience that makes people actually develop fibromyalgia <laughs> um, and is it in your opinion positive for patients to get this diagnosis and if it is about central sensitization is then fibromyalgia reversible <coughs> uh, so it's a very long so question <laughs> and uh, I, I, th I think you I can, can, I can, I can only give you some uh, some answers from from a clinical experience and from clinical studies. Uh, first, in most patients, fibromyalgia starts with some local pain. Yeah, and in some patients, as I showed you my examples, it starts even in childhood or in adolescence. But there are also some people who starts with only with, with forty or fifty years. But most patients start with local or regional pain, and then sometimes it spreads. I see some patients which start with widespread pain, but this is only a small minority. And uh, the other question is, uh, will can fibromyalgia be healed or can it disappear completely? Uh, there are some, there are some long-term studies on the cause of fibromyalgia, and they show that there is no complete remission, but the life expectancy is normal and that most people uh, succeed in to get better to their symptoms and to be more satisfied with their life despite uh, persistent symptoms. Okay. 